Okay, and we're back for the third part of this video series. So we're going to jump in here and show you the uh, Davis technologies like the TC3 series, which work on rates of change of acceleration. So they're monitoring the drive shaft for a spike. Um, if it sees a sudden spike, it jumps in there and pulls timing out. The TC3 series cannot add timing. It can drop cylinders or retard timing. So again, it's watching the drive shaft. There's no plots. There's no curves there's nothing really to do you got a couple basic settings for sensitivity and uh, how big of a retard how fast you're gonna ramp it back in a couple of little fine tuning features to start rpm etc um, and it just watches the drive shaft for a spike and if it sees something go wrong it jumps there and pulls out power so <clears throat> some people ask wouldn't well, isn't that all i need why wouldn't that be the, the holy grail you don't have to do anything the pro is you have to do very little. It's, it doesn't take near as much user action interaction as a, you know, a plot style system. The con is it's looking for spikes in the drive shaft. So if it gets in trouble smoothly, just too much wheel speed, you know, here you are second half out and you got 3,500, 4,000 wheel speed, then that's just more than the tire can take. It's more than the car should have, but it's smooth. So it was never a spike. It just looks like a faster car doing its normal run, so it may not catch it. So that's the downfall of the rate of change stuff or the self-learning. Within that, we have three versions. We have the TC3, which is non-self-learning, looking for a rate of change. So essentially, if the drive shaft is just accelerating faster than X, say it was your tachometer. If your tach can gain 1,000 RPM a second, and that's the limit, then 1,200 is a problem. So same for your drive shaft. So you're sitting still, we know you're at zero drive shaft. Seven seconds later, you're at 7,000 drive shaft. Probably about a seven second car. So it's gaining 1,000 RPM a second. If it suddenly jumps to 1,050, 1,100, depending on your sensitivity, then it's gonna jump in there and pull timing out. It doesn't know if it's what this car does or not. It just knows it's faster than you told it to go. The Self-learning brings a little different twist to it where take a car like a pro stock that's going to shift gears, you know, four times for five speeds in a run. First gear obviously accelerates harder than third gear, fifth gear. So what's your limit? Is it 1,000? Is it 800? Is it, you know, 600? So the self-learning is learning how fast the drive shaft is accelerating on average and looking for a deviation from that learn rate. So that it sees a spike above that learn rate. Hey, I've been I've been gaining a thousand. It goes to thousand fifty. Do something. Last couple of revolutions, I've been gaining eight hundred. I'm in fourth gear. Then it jumps to eight twenty five. Do something. Again, you have a sensitivity for how likely it is to come on, and then you set things like how much it's going to retard, how long it's going to last, how fast it's going to ramp it in, stuff like that. So we can get in. I'm going to try to keep it brief. I'll probably just show the self learning version. Um, it's what most people buy. Um, we can try to do a quick comparison of self-learning and non-self-learning. So if we run our runs into this, we can show you what it's going to do from the simulator. So behind me, we have our test setup that we're getting ready for PRI with. <clears throat> but on there is a simulator. If you haven't seen the first video, it can play back runs exactly as they were recorded. So they can be imported from your race pack or your holly logs or your arc module logs, your CSV files. If you can export it out of your other data systems, then we can bring it in and play it back just like it happened. That lets us sit here and develop things, make the same exact run a thousand times while we're working on math. So not only do we have some proprietary software we use to develop the self-learning behavior, the algorithms, whatever you want to call it, we've got the simulator to then go back and play multiple types of real racetrack runs and see what it would have caught and what it wouldn't have caught. So we've got that. You'll hear a squealing noise back here when I run it. And we'll bring it up on the screen, the race pack. So we've got a race pack here, uh, live timed in. Let's start it. So first we'll just do a, uh, I'll just show you a run with uh, what the simulator does on a pro stock. So there's a drive shaft going up. Each, this is a little bit of tire slip on the hit, and then this is all gear changes. So let me stop it, or it's going to play again. Okay. So now, let's turn on the trace, and we'll turn on the, we've got the uh, traction control set up. 
it's in self-learning mode right now, number two. And we've got some basic settings, sensitivity five. When it comes on, it's going to hold that retard for three revolutions of the crankshaft or drive shaft. In this case, um, if it spikes, <clears throat> it's going to do its total retard of 10 degrees if it goes more than 30 RPM above. This sets the proportion of how quick it retards. I've got it set up right now. I we'll do it all the time, whether it's armed or not. Um, it can drop up to one cylinder if it gets above the 30 degree, 30 RPM spread. It won't do anything until it gets 2200 RPM out so that we ignore that first wheel slip. And it's going to ramp it back in at a rate of 100 degrees per second, which is 10 degrees in a tenth. So if it pulls all 10 out, it'll take a, at least a tenth of a degree to put it back in. So let me uh, shrink that out of the way. And we'll do that same pro stop run. And there you can see the corrections. So let me stop this, back it up a notch. So we've got our drive shaft speed. We've got some wheel slip, but we told it wasn't allowed to make a correction until 2200. So it ignores all this. Sees this rate of change rate. If you line a business card up, for example, along that green, it's pretty steep. It's going to come up through here. So it sees that sudden spike based on the sensitivity we got set to. Pulls timing out, takes out all 10 degrees because it's more than 30 RPM above what it predicted it would be. It held it for three revolutions of the crank, ramped it back in. Come along here, it sees this spike of the drive shaft starting up, gets it, holds it. Here you can see it holds it a little less. Here it makes a smaller amplitude correction for a smaller amplitude spin. And it's hard to see this one, but there's actually a hump in the drive shaft right there for the fourth, fifth shift, and we even caught that. The speed we catch this stuff is extremely fast. You can see as soon as that drive shaft starts going up, the timing is already retarded. So this is no dot plot. This is just what it's seeing live real time. Um, I'm going to run it again, play a couple different runs. Different kind of cars. This is all the same setting. Um, just show a little bit of versatility. So here's a some sort of a radial car. Pro stock. Here's a pro nitrous car. Again, all the same settings. Doing a pretty good job on every one of these cars. Here's a a top fuel pedal fest. So you can see on every one of those with one set of settings and self-learning. It did a pretty good job of catching anything going wrong. We had a little bit of over acceleration here. Again, we're not letting it start till 2200. So it over accelerated here, came on, did its thing. Here it's nice and smooth. Now, if this was a slower car, this wouldn't be normal. As you see, there's the downfall. It's nice and smooth. It's a nice smooth rate of change. It didn't do anything. Right here, as soon as that rate of change started increasing steeper, it said no, and it stayed on until it laid over. Then when it laid over, it turned off, and then it decelerates because he's pedaling it. And again, these systems weren't making corrections to on these runs. This is just recorded data we used to see what it would have done. So then here it starts up again with that over acceleration, catches it, catches it. We go back to the pro nitrous run. It sees it's not allowed to come on until 2200, which it did as soon as it was allowed. It wanted to come on back in here. I can bring that rate of uh, that start RPM back and catch more of this. But for this example, I'm trying to move along here. So then it laid over. It did pretty good. Going, 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 going. Gear change. And you can see as soon as that RPM starts up, we're already retarded. Catches it. Snubs that spike. Same here. 
little hump right there. If we go up to one level of sensitivity or maybe two, we'd probably catch that. Um, but that's not a problem, obviously, because it kept on going. And then there's the final one back up to there's our pro stock run. It's a good example of how it does proportional retards for the proportional slip. And here's this, uh, I can't remember what car this was, but it's obviously not a super fast car. 6,000 RPM at the top, drive shaft speed at the top. But it was on a, I think it was a no prep. Um, and, you know, of course, they probably pedaled it here. And then everywhere it was trying to wiggle and get away on these bumpy, unprepped surfaces, it was catching it. This is actually just a little bit of noise in their drive shaft. Looks like their gap's a little too big when they got out of it. It uh, unloaded the load on the pinion and had a little extra gap. So it was dropping out, and then the track stroll is seeing those up spikes. It's not seeing the down spike. It sees that up spike start comes on. So as you can see, extremely fast, simple to use. We're the only people in the industry uh, doing the self-learning rate of change stuff. No one else even has anything like this. This is you can buy standalone as a TC3 for a thousand bucks. Uh, TC3 SL is two thousand. The SL Pro gives you some more adjustability. Uh, like the Profiler in the previous video, you get zones where you can do different levels of sensitivity and retard at different parts of the track. Um, that's twenty five hundred. Or you can add the TC3 SL Pro to a Profiler system for a thousand bucks. So then you've got the best of both worlds. So You've got two completely different ways of doing traction control here. Luckily, both made by the same company. So we can add them together and let them work hand in hand simultaneously instead of arguing ours is better than theirs and theirs is not as good as ours and blah, blah, blah. So you can have the best of both worlds. I'll go ahead and do a run right quick with, uh, we'll put it in non self learning. You'll see it does a pretty similar job. Um, you usually have to adjust the sensitivity a little bit. We'll try it like this, see what happens. So I'm going to run those same runs again and non-self-learning. So this would be like the $1,000 uh, TC3 system. Here's that no prep car. Does a pretty good job, maybe not as detailed. Here is the Pro Stock. This is a pretty easy one. The shifts are pretty apparent. It missed that last shift. Here's the Top Fuel Pedal Fest. Here's the Pro Nitrous. So as you can see, it does a pretty good job. Even the self, uh, the non-self-learning TC3 for thousand bucks, you know, caught everything. It's not quite as detailed. It's not as particular about doing the proportional retards based on the rate of acceleration that was learning. Um, you know, big stuff like this pedal fast, it catches about all the same stuff. The Pro Nitrous, you see it's not quite as proportional and it misses this last shift because it learned this rate and that's not a very big deviation. Or I'm sorry, it didn't learn this rate and that's not a real big deviation. So it's not a, it's not a big spike, a big steep hill like this. So it didn't break the rule of whatever that rate of change was set to in the non-self-learning. On the self-learning, it's learning this rate, which is slower than this rate, and looking for that little deviation from that learn rate, from that nice decay of acceleration. And then there's this bump. Self-learning will catch it. Non-self-learning won't. So it's subtle, but different. But as you can see, even the non-self-learning works extremely well. Here it might be a little bit... Uh, too aggressive you may choose to bump the sensitivity down one because this car's I think this was no prep again it's got a lot of steep little short spikes but it's taking out big corrections so with the self-learning you got to do a little less work uh, tuning or it's a little more fluid as conditions are changing especially in the fast-paced world of 
no prep or grudge racing where you're you're, you're running back to back a lot. Um, but as you see, it does a really good job in self learning or non self learning. Those were all those different cars on the same settings. We haven't even tweaked the settings for these particular cars. Again, we're the only ones to offer anything like this. Um, and it can be a standalone system, TC3 series, or you can add the TC3 SL Pro to your profiler system for, like I say, a thousand bucks, and you get the best of both worlds. So, again, not the same as what you got built in your current system, not even close. We'll do one more video showing the other systems versus the Davis stuff. Stay tuned. Hopefully get that done uh, tomorrow.